Is Christianity still for young people? Let's talk about that. No, please, you first. <laughs> Me and Dylan are currently co-operating the board today. I don't I don't know why. I, maybe just for personal preference, but uh, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's uh, you got a friend in me. Bum bum bum. You got troubles, and I got them too. You know that song? It was in Toy Story. I'm feeling kind of blue. I don't think that's the same song. Oh, you ruined song. it. I don't think that's the same song. That's my version. Well, it's an honor, privilege to be here with the Pause Podcast boys again. At just Paul. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a hard get transition. it right. Sorry. Get it right or <laughs> take a hike. But, uh, yeah, Shout out that was. eagle. <clears throat> We've got a special young man here with us this evening. And for those of you that don't know, me and Dylan are God Called Preachers. We've Very been preaching good. for several years now. And we brought one of our close friends. We grew up in camp together. We've referenced him in other videos. A very handsome young man, a godly preacher. We're excited what God has in store for his life. His name is Isaiah Green. Local legend. And uh, uh, he hosts the healing uh, ceremonies up in Newland. <laughs> Uh, you, I'm a rattlesnakes. Yeah, yeah if rattlesnakes. You, yes. you see anybody Snake sucking thing. the venom out of snakes? Uh, it's it's Isaiah, Isaiah Green. Tractors <laughs> Green. My pash is Michael Green. <laughs> there it is. Shout out, uh, uh, shout out pops. <laughs> shout out pops. <laughs> so tell oh us, uh, how was? Uh, I understand. When when did you accept the call to preach? Was, so I accepted the call to preach. It would have been August, I believe, tenth of last year. Um, so this coming August will be a year ago that I answered the call to wow. preach. And uh, just uh, one of those things, you know, I dealt with it for a year, probably, mm -hmm. or a little bit better. Uh, really, first time Lord dealt with it with me on it. Uh, we were at a prayer meeting, and uh, it's like, Lord, we were praying together, and I couldn't pray, and Lord was really putting that in my heart, uh, what he wanted me to do, and I'd never experienced that before. Absolutely. And that's not what I, you know, my dad is, has pastored for 28 years. Uh, my older brother, Ethan, he's a preacher. He's been pastoring. Uh, for a few years now, and Lord's been blessing them. And I had my way set. I really felt that uh, law enforcement was going to be the direction I would probably go. And um, that's really, I really was set in that. And uh, for a while, I didn't necessarily run from the call because I've been around it all my life. I've been around church all my life. Um, my dad's pastored longer than I've been alive. And uh, so looking at that, it really wasn't, I enjoyed being in church. I loved the I love being around people and all those things. It wasn't that necessarily. I just wanted to know it was the Lord's call uh, more than just what I wanted or my desires um, to flood in there. That's what happens, man. <coughs> Absolutely. Law enforcement. God says, <laughs> <laughs> Got him. You thought. You're preaching. Yeah. Son. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so uh, just. Best decision, right? Yeah. Aside from salvation. Oh, absolutely. Don't you enjoy it? Absolutely. You know, it's one of those things, you know, I have a landscaping business, stuff like that. It stays busy. And there's many things that we all stay busy with, with your work and all those things. But ministry is that one thing that I would, and nothing thrills me more than to stay busy serving the Lord Absolutely. and staying busy for the ministry. There's times in working or just traveling, anything that I may get a little tired and get kind of just burn out a little bit. But when it comes to ministry, man, I want to I be wore out, right. you know, serving the Lord. And it's so that's, that's a good busy, is being busy for the Lord. And like yes. you said, besides salvation, that's been the greatest thing, uh, greatest decision uh, to go for God. And um, there's there's nothing like serving the Lord. Absolutely. Need to put how, that on a T-shirt. How old are you again? I'm 18 years old. If you had to give uh, some young Christians advice on, you know, being young, and, I mean, you, how old were you when you were saved? So I, would, I got saved in 2017, April 29th, and so I would have been, I believe, 12 years old at the time. Um, and that's when I got saved. I had made one false profession before that. And, uh, 2017. 2017. That doesn't feel like it was that. I long. know, man. I'm he said I was like 12. 12. I was like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> I was like 21. <laughs> like, that was like last year. Yeah. yeah. I tell you. It's crazy. <laughs> what? It I was feels 21 like, I mean, I, last I, year. It does. I mean, two, I, when well, he said 2017, I was like, I ain't that long ago. Yeah, I was 12. 12. <laughs> I was like, 12. Uh, man, that's been a long yeah. minute ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. I was like, man. So you know what, what? What, kind of, what kind of advice or encouragement would you give young Christians? And we've all been there as young Christians in the faith, and even your dad pastored, and you, know, we went, you went to camp at a very young age. What kind of motivation or encouragement would you let them know that Christianity is still for you, God is still moving, and, and, and God is on the throne? Sure. Well, I would just say this. 
I've lived, you know, I've lived in my life. There's a lot that I'm thankful for that I've been sheltered from. A lot of people understand there's a difference between smothering and sheltering your children. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe, you know, I'm thankful for the shelters that my parents put over me that have really shielded me from a lot. And there's a difference between sheltering and smothering Absolutely. and all those things and according to the Word of God and all that. And so I'm thankful for a lot that they shielded me from. But even just growing up, you know, we all have to make that decision for ourselves right. mm-hmm. that we're going to go for God. And uh, I've found um, when I've lived for myself and I've lived pridefully, the most miserable I've ever been outside of being under conviction is being saved and out of the will of God. I might, I might not even be in the bars and doing all this crazy stuff, but just being out of the will of God, knowing that I'm not in connection with the Lord, knowing that I don't have a devotional life with God, it's the most miserable place to be. Why? Because I know what, I'm, what I had. I right. know what I'm missing. I know that fellowship that I once had. We never lose the relationship, right. it's just but we, the it's the fellowship. Right. And uh, I, I just say it's a word of encouragement. I mean, I'm you know to eighteen year olds and just young people all alike. Um, there's no greater joy than serving the Lord. Yes, uh, there's really not. Um, there's and I and I've seen I've seen a lot of what the world does have to offer. And uh, again, I've been shielded a lot, but I've also seen a lot. Especially and, with uh, this new age of Christianity right, yeah, we got coming right. up. Well, right. there's this new age that of Christianity that we can live however we want. They take and the live grace in of sin God and all these yeah. things, and we just we smear, like you said, the grace of God. I'm thankful for the grace of God, and uh, I'm thankful for His long suffering nature and His mercy. But you have to understand that Christianity come with, comes with a cost. Right. He may a be a God of grace, but right. he's still a God of judgment. Absolutely. Yep. Because the type of Christianity we're in today, talking about that, like, is Christianity still, what is it, is it still is it applicable? still applicable for young people? Right. Yeah. And young people <clears throat> still get into Christianity because, yeah. you know, I mean, they're, they're very lenient. Like you said, a lot of them have seen the smothering lifestyle, and it's, yeah. it, as soon as they turn 18 and they've lived in that lifestyle, they go out in the world again. Well, that's, yeah. uh, personally, well, where I see the, the error in that, like, I agree with him, there's a difference between smothering and sheltered. I was sheltered. And right. uh, I, like he said, I appreciate that. That it saved me from a lot of heartache. Absolutely, yes. I was not perfect, um, <laughs> but I was still sheltered, and so I appreciated right. that. Um, but anywho, going back to that, I think uh, well, the reason a lot of that, why that does happen when young people turn eighteen, boom, they're out. When it's seventy five percent of young people once they turn it's eighteen very never come number. back to church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What that is is because they've been beat with the law yes. their yeah. entire life. The law, the law, the law. And while the, the law is our schoolmaster, it right. shows us. Right. But at the end of the day, we can't live up to the law. Right. Yeah. That's why God gave us grace. And I'll be honest, grace is harder to live with sometimes too. Right. And yeah. uh <clears throat> because in that goes all the way back to where we're at today, with the grace of God and the generation we're living in of Christianity. Um, you can be saved. You can cuss and be saved. You can drink and be saved. You can fornicate and be saved. That's not true. Right. And uh, <laughs> clarify that. Hopefully, they don't clip that part. You cannot do that and right. be right. saved. That is the fruit of a sinner. Right. Right. And that we're all sinners, but that is a fruit of a lost man. In Galatians chapter five, verse number sixteen to twenty-one, it says, "They that do these things, it's present tense, actively right. engaging. You may have done those things, and you're going to still fail and fall and make mistakes right. even after you're saved. But if you're sure. saved by the grace of but God, if the you Holy are Spirit Christian. is living on the inside. Yep. It won't allow you to do that thing. As, as, right, as Isaiah, as Isaiah was saying, that once you have had that uh, fellowship with the Lord, yep. and then once you lose it. If mm-hmm. you if you really are a Christian, you 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 desire number one desire 100%. is to yeah. have that relationship <laughs> yeah. back. And there's right. something what I what I think is the most amazing about the Christian life, being a Christian and having Christianity. If you go without reading, you go without praying. You can't go to bed without thinking about it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I mean, there are times you get busy in life, and then you mm-hmm. do neglect the things of God, which is horrible. You shouldn't do yeah. that. But I'm guilty of that. Right. And uh, I've I've done that. And uh, prolonged periods of that, you do, you feel it. You feel that disconnection. It's like a relationship, like you and your wife. Like you need to talk and you You need to be together. If you don't, if you don't talk to God and God doesn't talk to you, you're not building a relationship at all. No, and but that's that's what type of generation we're living in. You don't of Christianity and uh, this new age of Christianity and all that. That's it's not healthy. I don't believe that's that's what that's not that is not what we need. It's nothing different from everything else already out there in the world. Why be a Christian and live like everybody else and act right, like everybody right. else in every other religion? It, then it's it's All not Christianity. Doing, it's just whatever everything else yeah, is. Right. It's, it's, it's what they call um, uh, humanism, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, where they serve themselves. I think it's humanism. Yeah, I believe well, that's human, basically human, you, humanism has been a fight ever since we came to New England. Yeah, you know, it was a fight between humanism and and trusting in the Lord, trusting yeah. Yeah. in yourself, trusting yeah. in the Lord. 
And really today, like talking about that new age Christianity, we all just want handouts. Most people yeah. just yeah. want, they want, yeah. well, they want what is in God's hand and not what's in his heart. Right. And they want what God can give them. And a lot of times, uh, many people, we all know the verse of Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And we quote that verse, it's a, and, and many claim that as their life verse, and it's such a powerful verse. But we leave out verse 19. It says, And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Right. Then it says, Now unto him that is able. Mm-hmm. He's not going to do exceeding abundantly in our lives until we desire the fullness of yep, God right. and we yep. give the fullness of ourselves to God. Yep, right. Once that happens, then God will do exceeding yep. abundantly. And we run around saying, Lord, give me this, give me that. Yes. And Lord, do exceeding abundantly in my life. But yet we're not giving ourselves to God. Yeah. There's a prerequisite the for that. God. Right. Yep. right. Don't, I mean, you can't, you can't treat God like a buffet. Pick and choose right. what you want. Yep. You right. either take him for who he is or you don't take him at all. I heard you a man know. of God say it one time. He said what we do is most often, he said we do what we want and then ask God to bless it instead right. of asking yeah. God to do something yeah. and then bless what God's will is. Yeah. 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 And in, I, all, in all reality, <clears throat> um, when you do what God tells you to do, that's where the blessings come from because yeah. God's never going to lead you to something that will absolutely destroy yeah. you. Absolutely. That's right. And and the whole new church age is is there's a generation that wants to have just enough of God to make them feel good about themselves. Yeah. That's yeah. what it yeah. is. And is is just them. just to have a little bit enough Christianity just so you know I can do what I want uh throughout the week on the weekend, but then I have just a little bit enough of, of Christianity yeah. to make me feel good about myself. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. Right. And and that's that's what it's been that this whole new Contemporary movement, yep. and that's what it is. It's like it's, a name tag. It's just a name tag. I'm a Christian. They have enough. They just have enough of the mindset of of I want you know to have just enough of God in my life to make me feel like you know I'm an okay person. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's what it's been turning. And a lot into. of the people we've we've tried to witness to personally in some areas yes. where we've been one that's, thing that we have seen them do over and over and say over and over is, is we're good just, people. Yeah, we're good people. You we're know, good people. And just trying to and I, we hear, we've heard this quote. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but we've heard it a thousand times. And you know. I'm just trying to stay on that straight and narrow path. Um, it's it's not one of the things you stay on. Either you're on it or you're, you're not, off it. Right. Yeah, um, and you can't it's, it's do not, it. Yeah, it's, you it's can't. not you putting you on there. It's God. Yeah, right. um, and that's why you know in the Bible it says there's many that think. You know, there'll be many in that day that call many, him, right. Lord, 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 Lord. Have we not prophesied thy name? And thy name cast out many wonderful works, cast out devils. Yep. And I believe I, I believe that's a lot of the uh, yeah. this, uh not yeah. dogmatic. Uh, yeah, go ahead and talk. I'm gonna think of this yeah. name, <laughs> but a lot of other like even denominations, charismatic, yeah, charismatic, yeah. and even other religions have that same format. Like, yeah. I, and I, we can even reflect on this when we were younger, when our parents were younger. There, we're losing still yet a generation of just plain good moral people. Yeah, yeah. I mean nowadays people throw their beer cans in the parking lot. They'll cuss you out over nothing. Yeah. They'll fight yeah. you in the shop in the shopping cart line at Walmart yeah. just because they're mad or frustrated. Right. Yeah. It well, used to not be that way, even when people were not yeah. Christian. They were yeah. just, hey, brother, yeah. I love there you. There used to be like, a day the well. drunks knew you didn't drink on Sunday. Well, see, yeah. Yeah. I, a story about that is my dad always tells the story was when he was a kid, when he was, I mean, he was probably 10 years old. He was in Sunday school at his church where he grew up, and the local drunk, that every, he was the local drunk. Everybody knew him to be that. But when he would walk against the church grounds, when he would walk past the church, he would take his hat off. And put it over his heart just as he walked, because just even a drunk respect. man who you. did not go to church, yep. he had enough respect for the things of God. But now, like you're saying, we don't even have morality anymore. Yeah. No, yeah, there's no morality. Even, yeah, like even non Christians back then yeah. still had a fear of God. In absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We're, absolutely. Yeah. we're and, so far past, and that we're now. so far past that that even Christians, so called church going every Sunday, they they have absolutely no fear of God anymore yeah, and it's not now, a fear of of you know like God's gonna come out of heaven and blow you yeah, with the, and you know, kill me pop, pop, pop. it's just a fear out of respect of who oh, yeah, God the is well, the Bible the says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom right we yep. can't have wisdom until we fear the Lord and right. know who he truly is with well, another thing is the um I forgot what I was going to say. I think about like Romans, I believe it's 828. It says, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. A lot of people leave out that last phrase. The big thing is, if you are living for God and have the intention to worship God and do the things for God, then God, and even the verse that you mentioned, God's able to do something with you. But a lot of people, like you said, expect a handout or, well, I do this or I do that. It's not about us or what we're capable of doing, but it's understand what God has done for us and we're able to do something through him. Right. And so, so that I, I remember what I was going to say, going all the way back to where morals used to be to where we are now. I heard a preacher say one time to the parents, and I was older. I was I was in my late teens, going into the early twenties, and I've never forgot this. Matter of fact, it was my dad. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, 
one thing that stuck with me now that I have a kid is he what he always said was what you do in moderation your child will do in excess. Yep. And uh, so we we there was a generation before us that let a few things slide, and then yep. boom, our generation has let more things slide. Yep. And ultimately, I this may curl a few lips, but I believe it, it, either way, we know through Scripture as the end times come, as the Lord is coming back. Um, things are going to get worse and worse. Right. Yeah. I believe the Bible talks Wax about great, worse and worse. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, there's going to be a great falling away, mm-hmm. and I believe we're starting to see some of that now. And uh, I do believe it's going to get worse and worse, and I believe a lot of people is going to start pushing Christianity. I don't think Christianity. I, I don't believe it'll ever die off the scene, right. but I believe there's going to be a great. There will be that great falling away. Yeah. However, I don't think that excludes us from still fighting and no. pushing what we believe. Right. Absolutely. And a lot the of times it gives us the excuses for. to not do anything about right. it. Right. Because the thing is, is yes, the times will wax worse, and things are going to get worse before they get better. Um, but really, I mean, it's like Elijah. He knew he strength in those he knew, he knew he couldn't keep the judgment from coming. Right. But he prayed and asked God to just hold the judgment off. Yeah. And it's just like that. Realize we're not going to stop these things from coming to pass. Right. Yeah. But if we'll just say, God, use me yeah. uh, to to show Lord show mercy to these people longer, because we have this excuse mentality that we say, well, uh, everything's falling apart anyway. There's no use in doing anything. And I guess really uh, at this point, and what the Lord has really put in my heart and as I preach out and preach around, is is really just revival of the church. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and revival, I'll be yeah. honest, I mean, there's been a handful, there's been, I can count on one, on one hand the amount of times that God has truly put in my heart uh, to preach a salvation message. And when he does, it's a special time. But I'm telling my heart is really uh, geared towards people that just sit in church, they come and they go through the mm-hmm. motions, yep. and we sit in there, and we never have a desire to do more for God. Elisha, when Elijah was handing over the mantle, he he desired a double portion. Right. All through Elisha's entire ministry, he struggled with the fact that nobody else wanted a double portion. Yeah. I mean, everybody, when it came to the woman with the water pots, why didn't you get more? All these, he's trying to understand, why don't, I don't understand, Lord, why these people don't want more. They can yeah. have more, but they do not get more. And and it's the same way in our day and age. God has so much for us. Yep. He has but so much for us to use, but we say, I'm I'm content with where right. I'm at. Yeah. We have to get in a place as Christians that we say, Lord, I'm willing to be content without being comfortable. Yeah. I want yeah. to be content in your will wherever you have me. I want to be content there. Because I've found even in ministry when I'm not preaching out places or if there, maybe the doors have slowed down a little bit, I'll find myself struggling to be content. And God really nailed it in my heart. You've got to be content without yeah. being comfortable. Right. Because yeah. a lot of times we also slip into the other slope where we're comfortable. Yeah. When we get comfortable, we put a capacity on ourselves and say, this is as far as I'm going, and I'm comfortable yeah. here. And that's a dangerous, slippery slope. So as a Christian, as a young Christian, um, just be content without being comfortable. Yeah. Right. And you can. You can. It, the you. overarching idea for why we've discussed this is, you know, there is a standard to uphold and a life to live, but it is yeah. very enjoyable. I and mean, we've got a podcast. We've got friends. I mean, we go out and eat and have a good time. And we'll play basketball yeah. and smack talk each other. You can still enjoy life. God is a God of love and opportunity and free will, yeah. but God also has established some standards and, and ways yeah. that you should live and hold yourself. Even, yes, even as a non-Christian, those – those morality and that sense of and that sense of knowledge of it that there is still right and wrong. Right. Yeah. And if you're watching this and you're not a Christian or you've never even been saved or you've never even been a part of this whatsoever, didn't even grow up in church, there's still a sense of respect that, that people in humanity has just seemed to lost. And you've right. seen all the comments, I've lost faith in humanity or yeah. I have this person or that group or, or these individuals. But the big thing is is you can still enjoy life. You can still love one another. Yeah. But there's also still a fight that is need to be fought. Right. And that's right. a very great point. And even on that, I mean, just talking about being able to serve the Lord and still enjoy life. And, mm-hmm. and yes. that you, we have to understand that, you know, we can, we can have things at churches. We can have things that we can enjoy. You know, the difference between the Pharisees and the publicans and sinners uh, was that the Pharisees, what they were teaching was not necessarily wrong. They were just teaching what they had. Yeah. The difference was is all they had was the rules. Right. All they yeah. had was the law, but they did not have the love of Christ in their hearts. Right. The difference is, is when we get saved and we get born again, that standard of holiness that we live to, not perfection, but holiness, living right, living clean for the Lord. The difference is, is now we do it because we want to. Right. Now we do it because right. we love the one we're doing it for. I do not serve God. I do not get in my vehicle and go and 
drive and preach and all these things. As much as I enjoy serving and all those things, I do not serve because of the service itself. I serve because who I am serving. Absolutely. And I think it's the you hit, one that I'm giving service to. You hit the nail on the head, which go all the way back to what you said a while ago. Why do people sit in church day in and day out and they're comfortable? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, because they they have lost the love of God, right? Yeah. And uh, they have no. I mean, it ain't. I ain't saying they don't love the Lord. Well, I mean, I am. I mean, if you if you're yeah. content where you're at and not wanting to, like you said, go on for God, go for yeah. God, then you've lost your love for God. Because if yeah. you love something like I love my wife, I love my child, I'm gonna do everything within my power to yeah. please them. Yeah. Do everything within my A power. Constant pursuit. Yeah, right. I'm gonna do everything I can do to make sure that I am keeping them safe and secure and pleased. Yeah, right. and uh, I believe. Christianity today, um, really, the, the the whole root of the problem, they have lost their love for God mm-hmm. and their love for the Word of God. Yeah. And which I can say this, I, I think it's in Revelations, it's either chapters one, two, or three. Um, but John writes, he says that we got to strengthen the things that remain. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, yes, there's been a lot of stuff that's fell off, but what we do have, we got to strengthen yeah. what remains. To whom much and, is given, much is required. Exactly. Yep. And which goes all the way back in. I mean, as we as this new age of Christianity, is God still calling young people to preach? Yeah. And uh, do you guys believe in that? Like, does God still call young people to preach? I one hundred percent believe Absolutely. that. Yes. And we've seen, I think, two two people in the past year here at Cherry Grove that God's called to preach, and He's using it in a great way. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I believe God calls people to preach. I know Absolutely. for me, July thirty first of twenty fifteen is when I surrendered to the Lord's call to preach at a Bible boot camp here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church, Amen. and the greatest decision of my life. Yeah. And uh, I love it. I know you guys can. I know you can relate too when you sing. And just but that that the pit in your stomach. And oh yeah. And, well, yeah, dude. You yeah. get that yeah. pit in your stomach, and I think it, I think mine's not really standing in front of people. Mine's my my pit comes from is what I'm about to preach, honoring to God. Yeah. And uh, like, right. do I? I it's a serious I, thing. Yeah. I as as I stand yeah. up there and I think about it, I'm like, God, you help me do this. You give me the message. You helped me deliver it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. Well, I mean, really, when I was struggling with the, when the Lord was calling me and putting that call on my life, you know, really, I said, Lord, there's no way I can do this on my own. Yeah, I've been there. And I said, Lord, there's if, if, if I want to know that this is you calling me because I sure don't want to do it on. <laughs> I'm my I'm not own. a public speaker. I don't no. like wearing suits. <laughs> yeah, I mean the whole nine yards. And so I, I get into that. But what I found um, is. There, there should be that element of nervousness, I guess, right. um, because I mean, preaching, preaching is serious, and yes. uh, when it, when you and when I'm listening to preaching, when I go somewhere and someone is preaching to me, I want them to take me seriously. I want them yeah. to take the word of God uh, very seriously, and and their deliverance of that, and uh, yeah, just thankful. And I'll say this on just talking about being content and things like that. You might be in a place where you don't know the will of God for your life yet. And I, I struggled with that when the Lord was calling me. I said, Lord, I really do not know what you want me to do. And so what I did, yeah, I mean, buddy. many, many yeah. long nights, many oh, yeah. long walks that I took in uh, three in the morning because I could not sleep. And I was, I just, I mean, pouring my heart out to God. And, and really the Lord put something in my heart. I said, Lord, whatever it is, I'm surrendered now to be surrendered then. Yeah. And I kept praying that and kept praying that. Yeah. And if you do not know yet, what God's divine purpose for your life is. Just say, Lord, uh, I've given my life to you. It's all yours, and I'm surrendered now mm-hmm. to be surrendered then when you do show me what your will for my life is. Absolutely. I've said it, I've said it before. I've lost power. Where's the power? There it is. <laughs> there <laughs> is power. <laughs> you don't want to preach without power. power. Help, Help, Help me out now. <laughs> no, I'll well, never forget. Hey, yeah, doggy. <laughs> Wet floor. <laughs> hey, nothing but a hound dog. Oh. <laughs> well, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. That's what that reminded me of. Oh. That. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You Talk, guys are going wick. back to that. You guys are wicked. <laughs> 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 going back to that, man, not knowing. Yeah. Oh, my word. that Because it was yeah. a big decision. Like, yeah. not. Yeah. it's a big, it's a big thing. Um, in my eyes, that you're about to you're about to say, this is what God's calling me to do. And that, yeah. number one, if God's calling me to do something, I want to make sure that's what God's calling me to do. Now, I'll never forget. I think I've said it before. When I went to Dad about it, I was like, Dad, I think God's calling me to preach. And uh, I was nervous. I was like, I Don't accept surrender. it, son. And he said, he Run. went. He said, well, <laughs> he said just. He said his exact words were, just forget about it. And I was like, huh, okay. Yeah. And uh, okay. so that about three months went on after that, and I, dude, I tried. I would go to sleep at night and like I'm gonna forget about it. This, this is not what I need to do. Just forget about it for three months, man. That was every night I went to bed. Every morning I woke up, that's all that was in my brain and my heart was preaching. 
And then I'll never forget it. And uh, <clears throat> I surrendered in 2015. I went back and told Dad. And uh, he said, you can't forget. He said, you cannot forget something that God's calling you to do. Right? You cannot forget about it. Yeah. I so remember I was it like, was uh, October 28, 2014, and I was at a, near a local church in Wilkes County, North Carolina. And uh, I remember I was in the in the pew, and I'd been saved for about a month and 10 days. And I was standing there, and the Lord pricked my heart. He's like, you know, the call to preach, that conviction. I was like, what in the world? I went to the altar. I was like, okay, God, whatever you want me to do. I didn't fight it, jump it, bump it, fight against it. I went home. I told my dad, I was like, Dad, I, I believe the Lord called me to preach tonight. He said, are you sure? <laughs> I said, yeah, sure so. He's time. like, just go to bed. Are you like, sure about that? I was that? like, okay. <laughs> but uh, there, there's different journeys, different lifestyles, and we all start somewhere different. And yeah. but Lord willing, we'll all end fighting the same fight, enjoying, enjoying the life of Christianity. And this is still for young people. Absolutely, yes. oh, yeah, absolutely, man. absolutely. And yeah, because yeah. I mean, let Satan tell you otherwise. No, not and at no, all. No. I mean, you know, Satan will he'll try and say, well, there's you're, there's no fun, there's no friends in serving the Lord. Uh, but really, the truth is, I mean, the fun and the friends that are in the world. I hate my friends. Uh, <laughs> I love these guys. We're I have together. no friends out in the world. All my friends I know through church. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are more worldly than what I probably should hang out with. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm big. Well, I'm big. no, but uh, dude, there's nothing like having friends not. that not only you can have fun with, but you can serve the Lord yeah. with. And, yeah. uh, I love you guys. Absolutely. Love you guys. Love you guys. Yeah. I met bring him later in, on in life, but I love... Oh, bring, bring it in. in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Jake, get in. Get in here, Jake. Come on, Jake. We, we actually have a live here. studio okay. audience here hey. this evening. Oh, as, as we close out, listen, we called Jake Greer today, actually, all three of us, me, Dylan, and Justice, and at the end of the phone call, we made sure he told us, I love you. Yeah. I love you, Jake. I love you, Jake. We believe in the love. Kumbaya, my Lord. That's enough for me. Kumbaya. We thank you all for tuning in today. It was an honor to have you, Isaiah Green. Yes, and uh, he does lawn care. And so if what? What's the name of your lawn care company? Uh, go Green Lawn Care. So give him a call. Go for God. Give him a call. If uh, you want to go for God, go Green Lawn Care. Hit <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. So make sure you like. Share. And subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a good week, y'all. See y'all.